So a very warm welcome from all of us on this 148th edition. Uh, a very important topic today for your clinic and for your home as well. Parenting techniques, current status and practical aspects. Uh, next slide, please. We can go full screen and next slide. So uh, the chairman of the program is Professor Dr. Tofan Pati Sir. Uh, sir will be joining shortly. So uh, in his absence, we'll be starting the program. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, Dr. Amrit and myself. Next slide. Please go to next slide. Shreya. Am I audible? Change your change your area. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, uh, in absence of uh, Tofan sir, I will be introducing the chairpersons. Dr. Uh, Shweta Chilukuri, uh, she is MBBS from KMC Manipal. She is a topper student with gold medal in general medicine, ENT in pharmacology. Uh, completed uh, post graduation MRC Psych, uh, UK CCT from general adult psychiatry from Manchester DNR. Uh, special interest and additional training in perinatal psychiatry, eating disorders, neuropsychiatry, child adolescent psychiatry, de addiction psychiatry, neuromodulation, and psychotherapy. More than 19 years experience across various subspecialties uh, inpatient, outpatient, counseling, and psychotherapy experience dealing with adult, children, and elderly. Lead consultant at Asha Neuromodulation Clinic, WISAC, and visiting consultant at London IVF. She has multiple awards, research publications in national, international journals. She is passionate about evidence-based clinical practice, believes in accessible, confidential, and holistic care for all patients. Welcome, Dr. Shweta. Next slide, please. Thank you. The next year person. Please go to the next chairperson of Abhinav. Yeah. So welcome Dr. Abhinav. Abhinav Tandon is from Prayagraj. He is Associate Professor of Psychiatry at uh, Allahabad Medical College. He is Deputy Editor, General of Psychosexual Health from 2018 onwards. He is Co-Chair. Uh, sexual Medicine Speciality Section in Indian Psychiatric Society, Imagine Past Assistant General Secretary of IPS, Honorary Assistant Editor, uh, IJP 2013 to 18, Ex uh, Associate Professor, UIMS Allahabad, Ex Assistant Professor, MLB uh, Medical College, Jhansi, Ex Senior Resident uh, uh, of Allahabad Medical College, Co edited two books, Intimacy Matters, Adult, Elderly Sexuality, along with Dr. T.S.S. Rao, Dr. Sanjay Gupta uh, for in IAGMH. Has, uh, the other one was Psychiatry Training in India, Training and Training Centers, along with uh, Dr. T.S.S. Rao for IJP. Uh, he has publications and various book chapters, nearly 45, 15 years experience. Uh, best Alumni Award for Research Work with Academics during PG in Psychiatry. So welcome, Dr. Abhinav. Welcome both the chairpersons. The meeting is over. Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Alim. Yeah. One of the person one of the person can uh, introduce the chairperson, other can talk about the topic. You can go to the next slide. Over to you, chairpersons, please. Okay. So Is there an introduction to the chairperson, the slide? Yes, yes. Please, please display the next slide. 
right dr tandon do you, uh, I'll, you... I'll, I'll, I'll introduce the chairperson dr shrinivasan venkatesan retired dean research professor and head department of clinical psychology all india institute of speech and hearing mysore he has earlier served as faculty at the nipid sikandrabad for 15 years before joining the present assignment in 98 authored 30 books published 160 research articles and conducted over 330 workshops for various audiences is an alumnus of nimhans bangalore and his doctoral thesis was on development and validation of neuropsychological test battery for adults with intellectual disabilities he has been teacher for post graduates students a recipient of several awards and accolades including a gold medal by a former president of india in 94 and an sen memorial award for the best research paper by iacp in 2002 psycho oration award in 2009 and professor anima sen memorial award in 2012 his publications have received google scholar h index of 17 iten index of 37 and 23000 views on academia.edu quite an achievement research grade score of 24.75 and 176190 reads which is higher than 93% of the group members on this date welcome you sir yes right. uh, dr shweta right over to you that is indeed a very impressive resume and we are honored to have you speak amongst us and i'm i'm grateful for the opportunity to chair this session um as we all know parenting styles and parenting parent child relationships are determinant of emotional and behavioral problems in children and there's a lot of control trials on parenting programs where there is clear cut behavioral problems amongst children but not so many when the behavioral issues are borderline ish so and with the with the recent uh, covid pandemic and lockdown situation having children and parents locked down for a long time uh, in a very close environment came gave rise to a number of issues which we are now seeing the uh, the trickle of that once things have started to normalize so the topic seems very pertinent and i'd be eager to pass on the uh uh the, the mic to dr venkatesan to talk about this very unique very much intended much needed parenting parenting techniques and current status of these uh such techniques and the practical aspects of the same over to you dr venkatesan thank you thank you ma'am tofan sir is also here sir welcome thank you thank you very much i am here in some time but okay i have started everything thank sure you. sir you can start now i shrinivasan uh, i had been to puri for our mitam se me zara okay. jam under way sure sir can i share yes, yes please, please please proceed good evening one and all it gives me an immense pleasure to be amidst all of you today after a month or so because the last topic we had was on autism and today it's an equally important topic on parenting techniques and a favorite one for me also and uh, in this uh, connection i have made a road map before i share the road map i will just start with the prologue which will be the end of the epilogue also my prologue is the problem child is only an alibi an excuse a symptom of an unseen malady or malaise in the family so note these words very carefully the child is only a symptom of an unseen problem in the family the objectives of today's presentation are to introduce parenting in a perspective that is not spoken not mentioned and not discussed because our textbook especially the western ones and equally the indian ones talk of a parenting perspective which is very commonly and continuously known but today i will take a different uh, recourse a different route for explaining parenting please try to bear with me and try to understand what i am saying then i am also aware that we there is a little of talk about generations of parenting 
I probably don't belong to any of these generations and some of you also don't belong. But some of you, a few younger ones, would be belonging to the generation X if you were born after 1965 to 79. If you were born between 1980 to 95, you, uh, you can be calling yourself as a millennial. And if you were born after 95 and before 2012 and a parent, then you could be called a Generation Z parents. And uh, 2013 to 2025, you are called Gen Alpha. Why I mentioned this is, there is a characteristic difference in the thought process, in the philosophy, in the attitude, in the lifestyle of all these generation of people and including their parenting. This you should keep it in the background when you come across any parent, uh, ask them when they were born or how old they are. And accordingly, you should take a typical recourse to thinking where they would belong to. Next, I suppose, as I'm told, today's audience is mostly pre-doctoral and doctoral students in clinical or other psychology, psychiatry, teaching faculty and research scholars. I have tailored this program accordingly. What I have proposed to say in the next one hour. First, I will talk a little bit about parenting basics. What is the meaning, the goals, stages in parenting? What are the practices in parenting? Limitations in parenting? And available training programs for parenting? The dynamics of parenting? This is well known to many people, but I would like to, to differ on this. Uh, the textbooks usually talk of authoritative parenting, authoritarian parenting, permissive parenting, uninvolved parenting, indifferent and democratic parenting. But I'll come up with a bigger list than this. Then parenting styles. I am recently introducing this in all my writings, over or hyper, hyper parenting, under parenting, atypical parenting and other contemporary issues in parenting. Ex example, affluenza latchkey phenomena, proxy parenting, helicoptering, parentification, vicarious parenting, pushy parenting, hurried parenting, and the concept of kiddles. These are not there so much in our old textbook. I would like you to draw your attention into these things which are very relevant to our present generation of parenting and children. How of this parenting? As ma'am Derrick correctly said, the pandemic times which came recently has impacted and jolted the parenting phenomena in all over the world, especially in India. And I have several case vignettes and uh, several papers on this also, what happened to parenting, particularly of children with special needs, children with intellectual disabilities, handling their problem behaviors and skill training. I'll spend a couple of slides on that. Then the rules of do's and don'ts and common mistakes and pitfalls. Then I will also cover a bit on parent counselor relation. That is our professional, you, you or I as counselors or professional. What is the scene in India? The role of um, parents versus the people, professionals, how the parents look at us, expect from us, all that I will cover before I end up with an epilogue. What is parenting? Let's start from the beginning. Now, there are so many definitions. I don't want to make it an academic exercise by giving a lot of uh, definitions but it's needed to start the topic. And it is said the activity of bringing up children is parenting. That is covering from birth, rearing, caring, and providing for the offspring. And Brooks has said the process of or state of being a parent is itself parenting. How to influence the behavior and development of young child is parenting. So what comes to parenting, more questions are asked than answered that we should realize. People ask 101, the moment we talk of parenting, I get 1,000 questions immediately in any webinar, or, but I don't have answers, not more of, most of us have answers. Next, goals of parenting. Quickly, we have to get into what are the goals of parenting. Parenting is ensure physical health, survival, and safety of the children. A newborn baby is born defenseless, and survival is important. Their safety is important. Their physical and health is important. Parents do that job. They prepare children for the life as productive adults. They teach the value of hard work, develop behavior capacities for economic self-maintenance. And all the cultural values are transmitted by the parents, through the parents, to the child. Morals, prestige, achievement, all these are transmitted through the parents. 
they teach essential life skills. They are also very important in teaching empathy and respect for others. And they are also responsible for boosting the independence of the child. They also develop lines of communication, build good manners, and teach the children to own up mistakes, learn cooperation, and also learn competition, because cooperation alone doesn't work. Competition nowadays is more important. Healthy competition, of course. Handling conflicts, intrapsychic and interpersonal conflicts. All this is very important. How to invest in relationships, how to spend money wisely. All these are parental tasks, I should say. Before we move further, let us also understand all parents are not the same and all of us are not in the same stage either. There are various stages in parenting and when you come across a parent or when you come across a client who is uh, being tackled as a parent, you should understand that it's a dynamic process and what stage they are. A pregnant woman who comes to me, I must believe her to be a parent at the image making stage. That is, she's just building an image of what I will be like a parent. Or what will happen tomorrow if I become a mother? She's just in an imaginary stage. But when the same mother is handling a child of birth to two years, she is in the nurturing stage. And there is a wide difference between parenting at the image making stage and the nurturing stage. Similarly, when you have a two to five year old child, you are a parent of authority. That is, you have to direct the children of two to five years. At that time, if you simply keep on nurturing, then you are missing a stage. Same way, when you come to five years plus adolescence child, then you are at an interpretative stage where you will interpret the authority rules to the child. That at that time, you cannot simply nurture the child and just say, do that, do, don't do that. You will also interpret and explain the child why you should do that, why you should not do that. And later in adolescence, you go, grow over all these four stages and then, then become an interdependent. That is, you are interdependent along with the child and the parent. And at late adolescence and adulthood, as a parent, you move away from all this. But if you get fixed with any one of the earlier stages, then you are a wrong parent and the child is also at a wrong end. So in short, discipline is the most important thing in parenting at zero to five years. Training is important at five to 12 years. Coaching is important at 12 to 18 years and friendship is important at the 18 plus. So you should see the relationship between the parent and the child at what level and what age they are. So in short, I have also noted here, you are, the parent has to transform from a commander, coach, counselor to a consultant or a caregiver to a cop to a coach, to a consultant. That is, there's a transformation of the parent role at every stage of life for the child. And they should move in tandem with the development of the child. And if the child moves faster than the parent or the parent moves slower or faster than the child, then there are classes bound to happen. Imagine the child has grown into adolescence and the mother continues to be in the nurturing stage, then the adolescent will feel choked and there will be clashes, there will be dissatisfaction. So match, correct match between the stage of the parenting, stage of the child is very, very important, which we often miss. And please note this and keep it in your mind. The relative speeds also vary. The child may mature faster than the parent, or the parent may move away faster than the child. So what, how in tandem they are, you have to observe this when you work with parents. Can there be delays in development in parenting? Think of that. We talk of delays in children. Development delays in children is easy to put a fault on the child. Can there be delays in development of parenting has always bothered me. Yes, I've observed a lot of parents who have developed what you may call development delays in parenting, not in the child. So that is they develop slower than the child. Then you blame the child. Don't blame the child. You have to blame the, not blaming. I mean, you have to find fault with the parent. Then there are also signs of toxic parenting, emotionally mature parenting, underdeveloped parenting. Some signs I have written here, keep a note on this, put themselves before the child. The child becomes secondary. The parent thinks he or he is important. They are too rigid and believe that they are always right. Or they are too sensitive and reactive, not interactive, reactive, mind you. And they do not understand or they fear emotions of the child. 
or they are over controlling or indifferent or they may use drugs themselves and suffer from mental illness themselves or they are too passive too rejective so if you come across such signs in the parent beware that there is something wrong in the parent also don't always end up blaming the child include parent involvement parent monitoring parental goals values aspiration these are all terms in theory but it also works very much in practice when you deal with parents and there are specific things that parents have to do when they raise children which many of the indian parents seldom do or not un not frequently do like cheering praising smiling but they may end up doing negative things also so the practices should cover warmth involvement reasoning induction democratic participation verbal all this what i have listed here which i'll give you in my slide later there are a lot of tasks cut out for the parents limits of parenting as i mentioned in the beginning parent has own limitations you can't be in all and all everything and anything for the child there are certain things you can't so limits for the children are also there limits for the parent is also there in terms of controlling and punishment or setting limits for what is the role between both of them so this is very important to draw the lines that's the point i am trying to put across in this slide that the drawing of the lines and boundaries between the child and the parent when the boundaries become blurred then you can have problems i'll just give a practical example the pay i have a couple where the father and the mother are always on the phone or always on the gadgets and all the time they are on the laptop and they are the child also demands he wants to play on the gadget games and all when the father stops him the child retorts back a four year child he retorts back you are always on the gadget why can't i use it so which means the boundary is not clear so when the father can use it right in front of my nose under my nose why can't i use it and he is legitimate also so what the parent has no answer he says shut up you cannot answer like that you have to listen to me and the child says you listen to me and there is a huge fight between the two so what has happened the boundaries have been become blurred there is a when you want to become a parent it's a lifelong commitment it's easy to become a biological father or mother but to join as a parent as a commitment with responsibilities rights are there of course there are also responsibilities and you require to show warmth love affection you have to have skillful communication when you look at this list you would wonder whether we all should ever become parent only there are so many things that is required to be a parent so and culture is also very important in all this which we will see slowly ma'am was talking about training programs i am sorry to say in india we do not have any such formal training programs or copyrighted training program or patented training programs as which is popular in the west but i have just listed here just to remind you some of the ones which are available in the west but i have my own severe doubts how much of this will be helpful to our parent because you go and buy them on the web and market it that's a different issue but are none of them i find in practice will work with us but i'll just list it out ppp is a very popular program uh, parent management training program the incredible years a well known program and lot of research is being done in nepal also using that in indian setting i don't know to what effect it comes i'm very skeptical of all this uh, put packing foreign masala into indian and selling it out here uh, that commodification i something don't like but what to do some parents demand we want that uh, parent child interaction therapy defend teams these are all some of the packed programs available in the west and they are all manualized some of them are hands on some you have to go and attend there be there spend time which our, our parents can ill afford also now i come to the next section this is from the old textbooks and even some new textbooks also we are all read this thousand times we talk of uh, this gomrin uh, classification that parenting styles are of three four types authoritative authoritarian permissive uninvolved indifferent democratic this is something you all have read we have all read and uh, we are very familiar with this so i need not go and explain 
one uh, is supposed to be good for something, another is good for something else. But uh, by and large, these are given in all the examination question papers whenever there is a talk of parenting, these four or five types of parenting we remember and we are taught about. But I have added in the recent times a few more over parenting, under parenting, atypical parenting. Over parenting, this is especially in relation to Corona. I'm very much strongly believing that these are some things happening nowadays. Might have happened earlier also. Over parenting is competitive parenting. He sees the neighbor parent and I have to be like that. Perfectionist parenting is then by son or daughter should be perfect. He should be a perfect in guitar. He should be perfect in yoga. He should be perfect in studies. He should be perfect in everything. One little step down the perfection, then the mother gets anxious, the father gets angry, there's a fight, all this is happening. Helicoptering is another recent phenomenon. Like an helicopter, they'll be hovering on the top of the child. Look what he's doing. What is he doing alone in the room? Is he sitting and studying or watching TV? Is he watching uh, the YouTube? Or is he studying? So you, you, every activity is kind of monitored. So that is one type of over-parenting. Opposite of that is a trend of under-parenting, where it is child-led parenting. And now you, this is very familiar in many of the modern ads also. In the ads show the little girl tells the father which car to buy. The child tells in the ad which uh, vehicle to buy. I, I don't know how much the child knows about cars and uh, uh, gadget, but the child will, and our advertisers use that uh, phenomena very strongly and make child artists to tell parents to do this, buy this, buy that. So uh, it is uh, best friend parenting, that is parents think the best friends is their child. Now can a friend relationship between a child and father, mother be okay is something you, I told you a friend, parent, child relation is correct for a certain age. At a very young age, let us say a four or six year child cannot be a best friend of the father or mother. Role reverse parenting is common nowadays, where the children take up the role of the parent and the parents take the role of the children. Now, this is uh, something very new for our generation of parents, but this is enjoyed by many parents. And they appreciate that and share it in the um, WhatsApp groups also that my son is telling me to buy this or tell this. Then proxy parenting, they give it to somebody else. Let's say the grandfather parents, while the mother and father are away at work and are they are away in some other country. And the grandfather and parents have already parented them and one generation and they are out of sync with this new generation. I know of a grandfather, grandparent in Kur where they are staying with their grandson. The grandmother and grandfather and the father and mother stay away and the grandparents are taking care of this boy. And in Kur, the boy is given a separate room on the first floor with all the attachments like TV, uh, everything. And what he does in the top floor, we don't know. And he comes to eat in the bottom floor when the grandparents cannot climb the top floor. And he is up there. And only for eating, he comes and then goes and sleeps there and does what you No monitoring. Then I ask, who does? Uh, it is left to him what he wants. He does it. So, which means this kind of proxy weekend parenting is very common. I know examples of where the father is in Dubai or somewhere. The mother is uh, here looking after the two kids. And what happened? Every weekend, the father phones and says, how are the children doing? Did they create any behavior problem? Then he scolds on the online scolding. And the children know very well he won't come here. And once in a year, in the last two months, he comes here, takes them for outing, enjoys, and the children feel very happy with the father is around. And in the end of the outing, the parent, the child says, father is the best parent than you, mom. And probably the mom has to struggle the whole year. And in the end, the credits go to the father. And he provides them also. And they feel totally uncomfortable having weekend parenting, online parenting. Think of all this. Atypical parenting. Nowadays, teenage parenting is also not uncommon. And the estranged parenting, when both the parents are fighting for the custody of a child and one blaming the other, the child has become autistic because of you, the father says. No, no, because you didn't leave the jolly, he has become an autistic child. So the parents are fighting and the 
child becomes a puppet in the hands of both and court cases happen and i go around here and there in the court uh, trying to assist, uh, support the child and the parents are trying to influence me to take sides and tell the judge that the parents the child should go with me or go with them so a lot of is legal issues are raised because of the parents fighting and the child has to suffer in the end single parenting is another big phenomena and you not explain much on that same gender parenting is also happening thing nowadays so don't uh, mistake for that hyper parenting or over parenting you can have these forms where over schedule the pack of activities in a given day the parents make the timetable and pack it so much that uh, the child has to do everything he has to go get up at 4 o'clock in the morning go for walking and jogging 5 o'clock he has to attend surya namaskara or yoga and then 7 o'clock he has to eat a very uh, limited breakfast then he has to go for a morning tuition then he has to go for this that that until the end of the day till he hits the sack the 101 things he has to do. and everything he has to do perfect and the parents feel i have given everything to him and he has to return it with the same equal which he may not do many times competitive parenting i already mentioned one parent sees another parent he has brought him one bike i should also buy him bike he has he has been put in some special class i'll also put him in a special class so these are all certain forms of parenting you should be i've written uh, the publication is there go through that and see what are the examples case vignettes on that under parent or hyper parenting where you lay off you give free range to the child i had already mentioned where there are role reverse best parent parenting ideal parent the parent says he's just with us do whatever you want i want to interfere you want to do this you want. daddy can we have beer together oh yeah no problem he is just a 14 year boy he says no no because of you he is very liberal father he feels he should have a drink with the boy and he won't shout at him or he won't scold him so that is uh, in a sign of their uh, being very uh, liberal or friendly over permissive proxy parenting that is they allow somebody else to take up the parent an uncle an aunt or a distant relative so these are different types of parenting hyper parenting we also have reparenting as i said grandparents i gave the example of a grandparent redoing the parenting what he did all his life weekend parenting online parenting submissive or subservient parenting new age parenting so the list is going on and on like this close to psychiatry you would have parents who are having paranoid parenting not that they have a paranoia not that they have a mental illness but they are always suspicious narcissistic parenting they are they are those tendencies you see so these are some examples of parenting of that type i already mentioned all this other current temporary parenting issues you should be aware of is parenting by proxy by elder siblings so sometimes the elder sister takes up the role of the parent and looks after the younger siblings and including the uh, the parents she is the uh, that's called parentification and she becomes a second parent to everybody last key kids is a phenomena where at evening the child comes after school from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the evening the nobody is at home he is alone or the child is alone and he is left to fend by himself what he does or where they go who they talk to no supervision and that is by for force of the culture they have to be i already mentioned about helicoptering and parentification affluenza is a modern phenomena where money is flowing nowadays everybody has lot of money there is no short of money in india at least lot of money is there everybody can afford everything why if they ask one thing they can give 10 things if they ask for an ordinary chips packet they can buy a branded chips if they ask for a small shoe they can buy a branded shoe good and this kind of an affluence see that is there is also changing the lifestyles of the children as well as the parent and parents give everything and children get whatever they want without any effort and sometimes even as a bribe 
So they all want to become adults quickly. And that is where I use the word kiddles. And you find a lot of advertisements also show them wearing a mustache and talking in the ad as though they are adults. That is called kiddled phenomena. And they will be advising what dress to buy and all. Vicarious parenting is when you forget and put the interest before your interests or before the child. So these are all phenomena which must make you think a lot what is happening to the parenting in the contemporary times? Or do our old textbooks serve any purpose now? Is something I'm also seriously thinking every day. I suggest you also do that. As in the introduction, the, we were told, COVID-19 has brought about a lot of changes in parenting, especially in that new generation. And you find lock-in, lockdown, self-isolation, quarantine, disruption of routine, all this we are all aware of. And those effects, what has happened? And the, on the one side, we've been telling children, don't use gadgets and all. Other side, we have been giving them gadgets to attend school or having a remote class. So the parents, children are equally confused. Morning, my mom said, don't play with the, and afternoon she says, you sit with the class or a remote class or for a coaching. So do you find all this is, and especially children with special needs, I have found lots and lots of confusion in the children of what this, what is being said, what is happening. My mom and dad say one thing, but they do one thing. And some of the practices at that, that time, like use of masks and all, hardly the children can see faces. They have to struggle understanding the other people's emotions. Schooling was not there, or suddenly schooling was there, suddenly syllabus is changed. So all these are very tough on children with special needs, particularly. And there is also communication has become, so in one of my recent studies, I found social communication and play schools, particularly play skill, were terribly upset in all the corona kids. The, in the stage of that corona time, three areas that were strongly affected were communication, especially expressive and receptive communication, social and play. Their self-help and other areas were fairly better off. COVID has brought into focus the double mission also. Parents have to face their own troubles, anxiety, stress, as well as the anxiety of their children. That's why these forms of parenting emerged. Play materials and leisure time activities were very minimal. Very indoor activities were there. Structured attitudinal barriers were there. So these are all the issues that came up in the COVID. And it impacted the parents also. Their efficiency got down and their distress increased. The anxious, depressed, lonely. So you can find the burden falling more than the father on the mother. And if she was a working woman, all the more double because she has to look after the child as well. And some of them had to give up the jobs and also look up, convert the home into an office. It impacted their marriages, marital relationships. Sibling rivalries became very common and the elderly in such homes were neglected. I'm just giving here one example, practical example to change from all the theory. I have an example of a five and a half year boy of UKG, who according to the father had these complaints, does not follow a schedule, does not share things. When I ask the mother, he, she says, does not obey commands, does not write neatly, demands for things. When I asked the grandparents, they said, cries, or rather the parents make him cry. Uh, grandparents say, does not sit in one place, disturbs other children, demands to go for the toilet frequently. Now you can see, I've taken the versions of the same child from three people in the same family, and none of the three agree with each other. And if you add the therapist also, they have a different questions. What are the techniques you use? I asked the parents. You can try this experiment with your own client. The mother told, for all that behavior, I instruct him repeatedly. I hit him. I yield to his demands, or I become silent, or I pacify, scold, compel the child, leave him to what he does. 
complain to others. When I ask the grandmother, she says, I'll give him a candy secretly or beg or plead with him to behave well. And one grandmother told me, you boy, you better behave well, otherwise I will die. Then the boy would say, no, grandma, don't die, don't die, then you behave well. This is one type of emotional blackmail she used to do with the grandson. Grandfather said, he will simply smile. He said he will scold the parents in front of the child or he will take him out. The school people said they threatened to phone the parents. You misbehave, I'll phone your parents. I'll make him stand out or threaten to not send him back home. Here again, you see the mismatch between the handling of the child by the four quarters or five quarters. No matching between. And then you end up blaming the child. So there is no match between all the four of them. Another example. Here also, he, this boy is similar. He has behavior problems like shouts, pushes, kicks inappropriately, scratches, pinches, falls on the floor, slaps, screams. At school, was one type of behavior problems. At home, it is another. And when he is denied something, when he cannot verbalize something, when he is hungry or sleepy, that was the reason they say. So this kind of an analysis gives us what techniques you use, I asked in the second case. They said, we distract attention. Look there, look here, or ignore him, or look the other way, or give in to his demands. Hug him, raise our voice. Say, I am not going to talk with you, but the next moment they'll be talking to him. They give toys to play with. They take him out. They separate him with other kids, or they simply don't do anything. They sit and lecture. They lock in the room insist to say, stay sorry, or scold. You can see the big list is there. All these are tried by the same parent for the same boy over the same period. Now imagine you as a child, what would you understand of all this? You'll end up becoming totally confused. You observe the parent for a, three or four days, and as they reported, if there are so many techniques if my parent uses against me, the child is likely to be. And now the question is, who are we to blame? Parenting versus problem behaviors. Behaviors in children can be divided into two types. Skill behavior or positive behavior, problem behavior or negative behavior. So we are always talking of problem behavior only, but there are also skill. They are teaching what good things are there and also stopping from the so-called bad things. Both are learned, mind you. As behaviors, we believe good behaviors are also learned so-called bad behaviors are also learned because they benefit the child. The child cries, he is given a chocolate. When next time he will cry, why? Because he wants a chocolate. The child cries, the mummy gives a whack. The next time he stops, why? Because he is given a whack. So, not saying giving a hitting is the solution. So, what happens after the behavior makes the child continue or not continue? So, we have a behavior modification program some other seminar we can work and talk about it in detail. What should happen before? What should happen later? What are the antecedents? What are the consequences? This requires a separate long seminar. But in this whole scheme of thing, rewards play a very important role. In handling children, for example, we have discovered, or not we, the psychologists know that there are certain functions every behavior problem serves. Children misbehave because they get rewards. The child cries because he or she gets a chocolate or for getting attention. Bangs head because everybody looks at him or somebody picks up. Escape, that is, he can escape the burden of doing something. In, in order to avoid something, children misbehave. So these are all the rewards. And so the behavior remediation program has to be according to that. And when you use the techniques also, the technique should be used consistently. Not what you use and what the mother uses, what the grandfather uses, but everybody should use the same technique constantly, immediately, and with clarity. And you should never reward the problem. This I will do in a separate workshop if you want it on handling behavior problem, but just suffice it to say that a lot of things parents need to do when it comes to the behavior problem handling. That's what I mentioned, you know, two types of behavior. And most important in this is these four goals. 
there should be clarity in the use of your rewards or punishments. Means tell the child, you got this chocolate because you did not cry. We are taking you out because you did not do this or you did this. Consistency across people, across time, across places, across events. Constancy. First, you should be firm enough. I have to do or not to do. If you delay dally as a parent, children, child knows that there is some weak point in the parent. Immediacy. But uh, at all said and done, there is no simple, universal, two-minute, quickie solution for all this. A lot of hard work and parents require continuous practice, training, perseverance and lifetime investment. Quickly, we'll go to the, some of the don'ts because I have a little less time. Don't, and because this is like a uh, simply saying don't do, don't do, don't do, but it's uh, a quickie solution I'm offering because of short of time. But uh, I would love to go in deep into all of this. Don't ask questions for everything. Don't overreact or overpraise for everything. Don't give too many instructions at the same time, which are many of the parents I find doing. They'll say, come on, press the teeth, uh, open your this thing. At the same time, four instructions are given and the child ends up doing nothing. So you should give one instruction at a time. Don't indulge in comparisons. Look at the boy next door, how well he is studying, how well he comes home, puts off the shoes and all that and comes and eats. Do you wash his hands? Whereas you look at yourself, modeling is different. Comparison is different. Don't compare, but model. Model is showing and to make him do as he does or I do. Punishment, humiliation, shame, criticism in public to be avoided. So don't criticize in public. Don't shame them, in, humiliate them. Don't go back. Don't procrastinate. Sometimes I've seen parents telling, you do this, I'll buy you an ice cream. Then when the child comes back and says, give me, no, no, now it is raining. Tomorrow I will buy you the ice cream. Or uh, when the child says, you give me a balloon, I'll give you, but it's there in the shop. The shop is far away. Tomorrow when the shop opens, I'll buy. And the child feels totally deceived. For us, it may be a small thing, but for the child, it may. Some of them bribe. Bribing is different from rewarding, mind you. Reward is you give something to the child after the event has occurred. Bribing is something you give to the child even before that thing has happened. You do your homework, I'll give you a Cadbury is a reward. You give the Cadbury, I will then do, do the homework, that is bribing. Never bribe a child. Never give her a thing uh, to the child before the occurrence of the behavior. Don't use name calling. This is a very common practice in the parents use that he is uh, lazy or is good for nothing. Don't use such names. Don't spy on them. I've seen in any number of cases, especially teenage, you find mothers or fathers setting spies by their friends or themselves, watching where they are going, what they are doing, monitoring. And one fine day, the girl or boy comes to know that they are spying. They lose all the faith in their parents. Don't end up blaming. Never use corporal punishment. Well said in law, but in actuality, this is still existing in our country. I'm sorry to say it is there. We come across lots of cases of parents punishing. Don't yell, shout, scream at the child. Don't dismiss your child's ideas or feelings straight away. Okay, okay, enough of it. I've heard a lot of this. Keep quiet. Don't lecture, sermonize, preach. Show by practice. The example should be set by the parent. More than preaching, you show it by practice. The father stops getting angry and throwing tantrum. The child will automatically observe that and learn. They, they, our parents want to shout in through, through a tantrum, but they want the child to be. They will tell lies in the telephone when they are speaking to their friend. Papa and Garmani, but at the same time, you find the child is not to use such kind of a thing. Don't talk negatively about the other parents. Don't expect perfection to be, and or expect them to behave like adults. And don't protect the child from failure. Don't fight your child's battles. Rescue the child before they miscay or don't rescue them. They'll end up making mistakes or better I will bring them away. No, allow them to make mistakes, learn from them, teach them. Don't fail to listen to the child. 
learn to observe and listen to the child's words, though it may be right or wrong. Indulge in the child. Overindulging in the child is something to be avoided. Never rely on punishment alone. Never argue back. And don't work on the same thing which doesn't work. Don't underestimate their problems. Don't be inconsistent, I already said. Avoid rules and don't avoid rules and limits. So like this, these are some of the do's and don'ts. Now, a little bit of word on the parent counsel. What of these parents come to us? I'm using the word counselor in a general way. It could be a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a social worker, or anybody who is uh, attempting to fix the issues between the parent and the child. We, they expect the counsellor to know everything. They say, sir, you are so experienced, why can't you tell a solution? Am I there to give solution to you? Am I there to serve as a saviour for them? The many parents tell me, sir, if you tell this boy, he will behave very well. If you tell 100 times also, he won't listen. It may inflate my ego very well that I am a, a great man there to sell, tell the boy. But I am not man to do that. I am not supposed to do that. But that is not the thing we have to incorporate. And so we are not there to tell and act as a savior for them. Then shopping behavior. Many parents I have observed keep shopping from one specialist to another year to the, what do you call, uh, astrology, palmistry, uh, magical religious meetings, all sorts of things they'll be trying to just solve the problem. And some of them have superstitions also. Very tough to handle that. For example, I had a parent who I remember who told me when a lot of behavior problems were there, I said, have you ever thought why your child is having so many behavioral issues? I asked the mother. She said, this boy is having a Krishna dosha. It means Lord Krishna has come into his body. Baby Krishna is there. That is why he is misbehaving. So that dosha, if it goes, our Guruji told he will become all right. Then did the Guruji I tell you what is the solution to remove that Krishna dosha? I asked. He said, no, every week you give him daily butter. Uh, butter therapy will work and he'll become all right. So the mother is trying giving butter. This is just an instance I'm just giving you on the hilarious side. But this is truly she And such a parent, if I talk of behavior mod modification, Watson and Pavlo, what she will understand. So I have to get into her ways of uh, explaining. And finally, I convinced that. And sometimes elder uh, grandfathers and grandmother, they tend to ask, sir, you are doing all the, are you married? How many children you are having? What are your children doing? First tell me that. Then the grandfather wants to know whether I have brought up my children better. And if they are also having some behavioral issues, am I the right person to consult for them? See, this is something in the Western thing, they will say you should not uh, disclose those self-disclosure and all that is very importantly talked about there. In India, this is a very common thing. And I respect that. And I'll have to answer that in an honest way. Otherwise, if I tell one thing or for the other, that means I will fail in my task. But I, I really don't know what the Western books would say for self-disclosure of this. And we have tried everything, sir. It has failed. This is the last thing I'm coming to consult you. If your thing also doesn't work, that's the end of it. We are going to all commit a suicide and die. Now, this is the threatening note they come to me when they come with the child's behavior problem because they have stopped enough. And when I, after discussing some session, they tell me nobody has told anything like this. You are the first person to tell everything like this. I don't know. They would have told the same thing to everybody else also. But the point is, they, they feel it's all very bad. So some say, why don't you try hypnotism and cure him? as though hypnotism is a magic that will solve their problems and the child's problem. Is There is no one shop, one uh, solution or quick fixes for all this. And you don't become a parent. As a professional, I suggest we should not become a parent. So that's when when a father or mother says, sir, I've tried everything. I've paid 10 lakhs for his engineering school admission. Today he says he wants to leave engineering and go for doing uh, film acting in Bombay, you just advise him and tell him go to go back to engineering. So, which means he wants me to become a father for in his place and take him back to engineering. Am I supposed to do that job? To take the role of a father and tell? No, he says, if you tell, you will listen. No, that's not the thing. 
these are some issues related to Indian and they feel same thing many professionals also feel wrongly that parents are the root cause of no not at all parents are more experienced than us they know their child much better than us so respect them and don't think that every day problems they don't know anything they know everything but it's maybe a little shift here and there is required some parents may have some psychological problems but not all of them mind you so you really have to spend time you have to spend quality time to understand but not that you are qualified more or i am qualified more we know everything about the problem so this is the parent and the professional relationship is also an important few points about the indian scene the perception of a counselor as an agent a representative a proxy or alternative adult figure as i said just now is something you should be really careful don't fall into the trap or viewing themselves as somebody who is suffering erring ailing and a punishable you no know, parents are not like that they have their own good points also in fact many of them have great points many parents in india also have another tendency sir do you have a practice somewhere i will come to your house with my child don't tell your psychologist or anything just me i'll come and meet you like a friend i will tell him i am going to my friend's house and coming to you and seeing you and you talk to him and like that nicely you find out what are the problems he is having and that way is it but don't tell your psychologist and i won't tell you or like that and if you tell like that it may work I said why you don't you tell that i am a psychologist no no you he should not know if he knows we are take, taking him to doctor or treatment he'll get angry so which means they want to keep everything shrouded in secrecy i mentioned about self disclosure just now and parents are also dominated by a medical model why is there all this talking and you doing and all why is there no medicine by which you can cure all this some parents ask me uh, you want tablet by which we can cure all the behavior problem in indian culture there is a extreme swinging that is observed nowadays once upon a time our grandfather situation was where the parents were totally dominating i still remember my father suffering lot of hitting and beating from his father and grandfather then whereas now the my grandson is over protected or over permitted so that was a time when they were hit to beaten punished for every small thing and they were slaves in the house something like that and now the parents are slaves at 12 o'clock in the night the child says i want to get a cycle so or a sports shoe i remember one case where at 12 o'clock twins were there the twin boys at teenage they told their parents we want a, a sports shoe just now it was 11 o'clock in the night no shops were open they said if you don't buy a sports shoe just now we'll jump from the second floor and commit suicide then the father phones me from somewhere and says what should i do sir if no shop is available or then he went to the shopkeeper's house opened the shop at 11 o'clock got the shoe pair of shoes for double the price gave to them and thought he has solved the problem so when it starts with a small chocolate or biscuit at one age and ends up into something like that at later age so the cultural sh culture shapes and hopes so these are all there so you also keep in mind all these cultural aspects the rewards i already mentioned rewards are things or events that happen after a behavior and that makes that behavior happen again and again rewards are needed but there are rules of when to give rewards what to give reward where to give reward where not to give reward how much to give reward this i have already told is a separate talk we need to incorporate in a lecture but the great golden rules are i repeat the consistency constancy clarity and immediacy rule never reward a problem behavior keep it in mind never beg or bargain with a child please behave well please do this no never use spanking or physical punishments never catch them doing bad rather catch them good doing good and praise them always better to praise them when they do good things than punish them when they do bad things reward non occurrence of problem behavior than punish occurrence of problem behavior avoid comparison although you may be well intentioned 
and learn to understand and respect to individual differences. No two children are same. Desist from helicopter, which I said in the beginning. Child rearing, caring is a very hard work and there are no quick fixes in this. With all this, the take home message I'm going to give you today is we all can think more deeply. Why don't we have a child directed diagnosis? No, why should we always have a child directed diagnosis? My question. See, in all this, you and I as professionals, what we do, we end up diagnosing a child as having attention deficit disorder or opposition deficient disorder or problem behavior or anxiety disorder, all that, who are we labeling the child? But have we thought of the parent? We take case history of the child from the parent, but have we taken the case history of the parent from the child is something you should think about. Do we interview the child and diagnose the parents? You should think about. No diagnostic classification exists for the parents, but there is a diagnostic classification system for children. We have the ICD, DSM and everything. My contention has always been, why don't we diagnose and have a system for parents? Why are they above? They are not uh, um, better off than anything. Children often are a symptom of a pathology in the parent. There should be a classification of parenting. No parent skill training schools are available, as I mentioned earlier. And diagnosing parents, then, this is what I have argued in my 2020 paper uh, given there. And I will look at that. My epilogue, almost time is coming to an end, is my favorite quote is this. When my grandfather dug, he got gold. When my father dug, he got books. When I dig, I get a bomb. And when my son digs tomorrow, I only hope he does not end up getting skulls and bones. But it looks like it is happening like that only. And the only thing about parenting rules is that there aren't any. And that's what it makes it so difficult. And my two favorite quotes are, "You, your child will follow your example, not your advice. Prepare your child for the road, not the road for your child. So with these words, even the very short time, I think I will take off. For any more questions you have, clarifications, with also a note that we should meet more often to discuss. Here are some of my immediate books are there. The many as I was told in the beginning of the introduction. These are my very recent books related to children and parenting. In fact, all my books are related to children and parenting. This you can even buy through Amazon or uh, Flipkart and all. Um, you can have a note of this. So the parenting case lets is in a book just 200 rupees, which is a narrative of all the examples of cases that I am seeing every day. So I have reproduced that only ditto from there. You can get a number of cases. And some film producers also approach me saying can make movies out of each case. Case let. I felt it's true. They can be done. And Toys and Plays in Children is another uh, edition, which has brought about nearly 100 plus toy activities, play activities for children. And most of them all revived uh, games, which have been lost in our culture. So uh, things like uh, Gilly Danda and uh, Kabudi and so many others also, Five Stones, all activities which we used to play in our childhood, have made an inventory of that that is there in and how which age what children should play so these are just two examples so with these words i'll stop here and thank you very much for listening to me for well over an hour thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much it was a mesmerizing excellent brilliant lecture brilliant presentation and uh, I, I and i must admit uh, i was feeling referential a bit uh, at times in uh, are you talking about me and my, myself as a parent also. So <laughs> thank you so much sir, for a, such a practical presentation. Uh, what, uh, perfection is parenting. <laughs> I was feeling mm -hmm. uh, over to chairpersons for their uh, opening remarks. Then we can go for discussions. So you can stop the screen share so that everyone is visible. Mm -hmm. Brilliant presentation by sir, uh, such a vast and huge topic. And uh, the best line was, there are no rules. 
so session is open for questions and remarks off to dr shweta for her comments well um i think this is indeed been an amazing presentation very true to the title and very very true to the uh, current pressing needs uh, of parenting these days i think for me personally you've uh, batted success for with your introduction and epilogue child is a symptom of the family malaise and malady not anything else that's really something that we can all relate to in terms of our clinical practice um in other things like the terminologies like influenza adult things like that are very apt to the modern age parenting that we see right now and lastly your comments and your observations about parent counselor relationships that we are you know we face on a daily basis is very very true in india and it's some of the biggest challenges that we face as uh, professionals dealing with parents coming with problem children right and, and to add the best comment was preparing the child not the road i think that that's ah. what sums up the whole presentation correct i right. thank you so much for that um i think we can hand over the floor to the uh, the organizers for, to take uh, questions if we have time for them yes ma'am we have some time for that uh, and sir before that there are too many requests to for you to come back again so next week so <laughs> if possible next week also we can do if i think have... we can all second that <laughs> so we can take another session next week on anything you tell because a lot of demands are there personal it, it, chat will it will be the same topic same topic will be boring no no some, some other good topics you know yeah. you are the other way you can go deep into the same topic i think you hmm. mentioned something about a follow on workshop maybe that would be quite no, no, problem behavior is something we can do problem hmm. behavior identification that is a very serious topic because in this i put the problem behavior a little part of this problem behavior identification and management home management but you should give me a little time before i give the next session but i will do it don't worry sure sir sure sir yes sir any questions questions clarification yes sir many questions clarifications there sir first me first let me uh, put some things in order uh, talking about there is a problem in the child so in management how do we manage the background so in background you said you have to bring the parents grandparents caregivers teachers everyone along on the same same sort of platform or a or a thing so the thing is ki how to broaden this horizon because how actually to do it because then you have to contact with so many people how how, how do you do in your practice this background thing how to do is some question i cannot answer in a jiffy like this but you must do it because child is just uh, on in the hands of so many so many players are there it could be a driver in the van also see we have come across instances where children have been abused by a school van driver and uh, there are instances where a school aya also gets into trouble with the child it could be a neighborhood boy it could be a dada giri in the classroom i remember one boy who is in ukg or class 1 who refused to go to school he developed what we called a school phobia and when i investigate deeply into it i found this boy was not having any school phobia or anything his classmate he was a monitor of the class and his job was to note down those mischievous boys name and tell the teacher next teacher who is coming to the class that this boy was talking in the class or that boy was making faces and the teacher will punish those children and once it so happened that the other boys they started showing dadagiri don't report anything to the teacher and bahar jao dekh lenge or something will hit you and all this boy became very chitty and he said i won't go to school he started having school phobia school phobia is a explanation for he, the threat he felt with his peers and when i told the father look your father, child is feeling threatened by his classmate who is threatened him to kill him 
and the father started laughing. What a small boy will do for him. His classmate is also charged. Guy, oh, what will that fellow do for this fellow? I said, no, no. For you, it is not a threat. But for this boy, that is real life and a question. He must understand and empathize that issue. And at that very fact, he has opened up it in front of me. is a great thing. So then we had to work out talking to him, talking to that uh, so-called uh, um, troubling, uh, what do you call peer, school teacher class teacher and it took nearly three or four months before the child started going to school again. Small thing like that. There are many cases of somatization problems. Every now and then I get where a child has problems like head headache, leg ache and pediatricians will uh, testify to what I am saying. Nearly 50% of the child's problems are all made by these issues. Pediatricians may not have time, they'll simply prescribe a medicine and send them away. But if you start working, where a school program is important. School counselors need to be trained. But unfortunately, in my study show, there are no trained school counselor. There is no school counselor training program in India, except NCRT runs a few courses or uh, online, offline courses. But uh, where are the school counselors? Where are the parent training programs? Where are the children empowerment program? How many children know that they have, they have a right to complain and whom to complain, where to complain, where to tend, complain about good touch and bad touch or do anything? And simply they keep quiet. They talk between themselves or among themselves. Children have no outlet. But if they speak something, they're got, they got a punishment for that. So this adult word led by the adult word or the adult word where children have to adjust to the adult world. And once they become adults, they transmit the same um, the disorder or disease to the, their next generation. I think we should come out of this and respect them also. But this is not easy. It's easy to say like this, but it's very tough to stand in the feet of the shoes, the shoes of the children. Think like what they think. Talk on their behalf. It's a very, very need of the hour. So I feel we should have a holistic or we should have a mental health team and really, I mean, in the real sense, not paper pencil teams and all. Even international schools and all claim that we have a team and all. But I don't know how much of them we really have. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, a question from the chat box. If the parents are fighting in front of the child, so how does it complicate things? Very much. <laughs> Very much complicated because you are giving a wrong model. You are fighting, and the child will definitely learn that they may not fight. In the child might not fight. Sometimes it might fight in front of the parent, but it might retaliate back somewhere else, or it might show up in the form of a body symptom, or it might get fears or dreams of uh, being uh, hit or beat, beaten or something. So the psychosomatic problems might be a indication. It could be it would come out like a body symptom. Then again, they come back rushing to you and the parent will say, give a treatment for the boy. But the root causes that parents are fighting. I've had in the instance, many instances where parents are fighting black and blue, hitting, beating, scouting, scolding. There's no peace at home. And the child can't, his child is almost intimidated, shivering. And the father comes home drunk. The evening, six o'clock to nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, the house is, so he prefers the father dies. And many times he tells his mother secretly, when will father die? He's asking. Mm -hmm. Not that he hates the father, but the point is the situation is so grim like that. He can't open up anywhere. These are some instances when you give space to the child, they will open up. And how much time you and I spend, which that is the one thing I always used to do. When parents used to come, I used to send them out and sit with the child for more than 45 minutes. And with the parent, I will spend five minutes. Then the mother will come, sir, I've been coming for eight sessions, but one time also you did talk to me as much as you are spending with the boy. I said, the problem is with you. So you have to get to know from him only. No, no, but don't believe what all he is saying. He is a ruthless liar who the mother tells about the son only. So which means there's a lot of issues. Uh, they don't share. They, I mean, you, we need to spend a lot of time with children. And how many times we work with the siblings? We had a project on sibling. So it's very important we, we treat the special child, okay? But have we treated the sibling? 
grandparenting, grandmothering, neighbors. Sometimes we need to work with neighbors also because they are also part of the whole scheme. I mean, it's a whole systemic issue. It's not just the child alone who is seen in front of us. That's the point I'm repeatedly highlighting. I think the particular problem with grandparenting is what you mentioned earlier about parent counselor relationship. They always seem to have a very undermining attitude towards people in our shoes, um, you know, the counselor's perspective. Mm. You know, what do you know? How old are you? Do you have children? Mm. Right. And that's that's something that's really hard to get through sometimes. Um, we, we, no, we have to accept that. To some extent, I think we are also at fault. No, no, I told you the example of a grandmother who came and asked me how asked I, you, yeah. I get asked and, a similar thing, so I could relate to that. Believe, you didn't believe me. She became my hardened fan and she brought eight to ten children later because I used to uh, ask that mother to come for speech therapy. The child had a sleep delayed speech. And mm -hmm. the grandmother came fighting with me, saying, why all the time this uh, mother is not cooking, doing anything at home. Every now and then she says, I'm going to speech and hearing, speech and hearing, and coming here. What is the secret relation between you and that mother? She was shouting at me. Then after the child improved, you believe it or not, she brought eight or nine, ten children in her neighborhood and said, whenever you have a speech problem, you go to the sir. And yeah. they used to refer through me. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? This is the sort of thing that will work out if they engage. Definitely. If we engage and if we model them with patience, Correct. I finally won over her heart. And that grandmother brought so many children uh, here, mm -hmm. right, cases. Not for me, but for the institute and the yeah. betterment of it. So I think they need to believe what we are saying. Mm -hmm. One who believes in religious uh, ways and the same I told the Krishna Dosha example, where they believed that uh, giving uh, butter or something will cure the child's behavior problem. Quite natural. But I never mm -hmm. felt offended. I said, you continue giving your butter. But at the same time, you do what I am saying also. Sure. I should not feel offended that you are not listening to me. So, so sir, I will talk about a case I saw today. Sir. One of my close friends called me up urgently. His son is in a scenic school. Admit, he has joined school 20 days. You no, know, Sainik school is the army type school. So he was doing in a good, very good public school. And today, suddenly, from the school, the call came that your son is suicidal. He's in sixth class. So please come and take him. So parents immediately rang me up. He came to me with his son. The, the father came with his son. And uh, while I was talking to the son, he appeared a little depressed. And it was a little tough for me to accept. That somebody can be talk so frankly about I am not feeling good. I have no motivation to study. I have no motivation to play football. Football is my favorite thing. No, everything he was talking about lack of motivation. Like then I took the son out. Then I talked talk to the father that your son is talking all these things. He told he's little manipulated. The, the call came from the school that he had told somebody that he will go and hang himself in the shower if if his parents don't take him back. Because most of his batchmates are, you know, they wake up at 8 o'clock, signing school somewhere where suddenly he has been pushed somewhere, where he gets up at 4.30, even though class is at 7.30. And he was telling, I miss my parents, I miss my elder brother, I miss my friends, I am not feeling good here. You, know, you, know, you could empathize with the, the whole feelings of the guy. And, and the father is telling that, he has told to us that my friends tell me that if I cut my hands, your father will come and take you back. You know? mm -hmm. So that means somewhere I feel he was not suicidal. Somewhere he made a joke today that he was taking off his trousers, just put it like this. Something happened, the children reported to the school. And now I wrote a note that no, he is not suicidal. We have agreed for 20 days that we'll see how he is adjusting. If not, we'll shift him back to the school. But now in the evening, where I was taking this session, 7:45, the school is refusing to accept the child. You take him back. You know, now we are in a catch back. The parents are not very, very convinced about the suicidal thing. I am not con convinced that the kid is suicidal you know, after 45 minutes. And now the school is refusing to take back the child. So how do you tackle such situations? And, and you know, th there's an element of everything here. So this agenda for the child was prepared by whom? Who made the agenda that he should join Sainis school? 
Who his father. Him. His father. I, I hmm. talked to the father. Why did you make him join there? What was the thought process? But the child prepared. He gave the entrance, and it's not easy getting to his signing school. Sure, sure. From there, the child did not know what comes in his signing school. Exactly. He has entered, it. and 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 I talked to the teacher also. They told that ninety percent of kids, fifteen days after admission, are like this. They're little down. They're homesick. You know. So so the whole agenda was prepared by the parents. His sixth classer. It's, the kid will not understand. What is there lying in the future? So, so how do we go about such kids? And we get oh, a lot of now. this is a very classic example. Till sixth class, which means around ten or twelve years, he is in different environment. He is not been under any regimentation. He is not been in the regimentation of a signing school. I know how tough it is. And suddenly overnight, you find that this boy is put there without any preparation. Without just because the father thought it's good only, father's angle is correct only. He'll have a bright future, all that. But was the child prepared for all that psychologically or physically? Is the school having a preparatory ground for all that? Is all there are so many issues we need to ask mental health professionals. That's what I am saying. There should be some honeymooning phase should be there. All this should have been there so that, as they are saying, it should be prepared gradually. And it should be done, and the school should have a system probably where mental health professionals are roped in, especially to see that these kind of children who are there, who are slowly indoctrinated into that system, it is not only in a signing school. It could be Ramakrishna Mission or Vidyalaya also. It could be any other uh, Islamia school, or it could be any um, Matrasa, because their regimentations are something many children may not be ready for. Or even if it's a way the party is allowed, whichever I am not for the form of the school, everywhere when regimentation is there, preparation is required. Transition is a very important thing, and transitional um, details have to be given lot of importance, especially children at that impressionable age. Same way again when teenage comes around the corner, let's say adolescence. My one of my recent papers got published last week is about depression in adolescents. I say is an act of violence. Violence is expressed as depression. I'll send it across to you all if you're interested. Where the child looks like depression, but actually it's a hidden violence in the boy or girl. It could be deliberate self harm. It could be suicidal self harm. Or just hurting other and self to show that I need help. It may be a cry for help. So this is a cry for help. He's just trying to tell, please help me. I'm trapped here. Do something. It may be a possession by a ghost. One girl comes to me. She is possessed by a ghost. Why? The, when the ghost possession is there, she is brought to speech and hearing to Mysore for a holiday for two weeks for treatment. After that, she goes back to school. And this girl find two day uh, two week vacation at speech engineering is a very needed thing. Whenever the stress goes high up, she throws up this ghost is coming, and then immediately the voice is lost, and she is brought for treatment. After treatment is over, she goes back well. So what is this? This is the communication by the child. Please help me. We should understand that rather than simply treating her voice loss by giving a shock treatment and all. And then it took a lot of time and now she is very well adjusted to the... So it is uh, time is very important. Listening is very important. Quality time, what I mean is simply... And the, the way we dress and appearance is also, let me tell you frankly, is something many of the children are put off. Don't uh, mistake me for that. We, when we wear a white apron and uh, all that and talk to the children, definitely they feel this uh, guy is going to give me an injection or do some operation. The approach itself is very intimidating to this. So that appearance and they should look friendly. And if you act too friendly, the parents say you are being too friendly. Don't be like that. Be strict to her. They will start dictating to us. You behave like this. If you give a little talk like that, then she will take advantage. Many parents tell me to, how to behave in front of their children. But I do all that to establish a rapport with the child. And they come up with all their so-called secrets, uh, then only. And that when we tell the parents, some of them cannot digest. But it requires a honest uh, interaction in all this. 
but it's quite a challenging job not so easy so it is very common change of school issues for many reasons uh, they do go for change in school either from uh, a board change from cbsc to other boards uh, state board or uh, they have transferred somewhere else where uh, in a new school and a new environment the child has to uh, adjust so uh, how to deal with those issues change of school uh, can be uh, very depressing for some children yes now here one question is is the change of school a cause or a consequence the change of school is the cause of their problem behavior or it is the consequence of this so sometimes what happens because the child misbehaves as a punishment they are changed school school tells you take him away that is more uh, depressing to the child as a cause the child we cannot handle who cannot handle the teachers cannot handle the school cannot handle not that the child cannot handle but you also think the child cannot handle your teachers the child cannot handle your syllabus the child cannot handle your classroom and he has a different learning ability not your learning uh, history geography but he is good in drawing he is good in painting he is good in music did you ever teach him that you don't so say don't send him to music class or uh, dance class instead may ask him to write a essay on dance and this boy with special ability he will rather play on the guitar better than uh, write a essay on guitar so i am dealing with lot of children that is another topic we can talk about sometime later is about children with the learning differences academic learning is not always to do with reading writing spelling and arithmetic nearly 50% of the so called learning disability i don't agree on that word also there they are all children with different abilities they are good in, one fellow is good in horse riding but he never got an horse and one fellow was very good in cricket he was under 16 captain but his father told him stop all your cricket everything business first finish your 10th class and then come after that you start playing cricket and this fellow left cricket he left 10th class he became a school dropout and today he becomes a drug addict now he tell, the father tell sir tell him to at least go back to cricket my father this child comes and tell me that time when i asked my father to send me to cricket coaching he said no today i am not go to what he is saying he wants to take revenge on his father because he didn't listen to me then i will not listen to him now but who is who lost uh, who is a loser in this game our country is the loser you are the loser i am the loser our society is the loser and That's we right. are special since we should uh, think deeply on these issues Uh, so there is also a broad topic uh, relationship issues in teenagers so yes. i think this will be a i think this is something sir uh, we can talk about yeah the one webinar should be designed for this only sir i think that's a very pertinent topic teenagers so, teenagers relationships you know we there a lot of people who are speaking yeah i think sir has been speaking non stop for the last one and a half hours ali <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we need to, to give him a break and maybe call him next time again. So we cannot. He has handled a lot of questions. Is a yeah, many questions, sir. We could not attend. Uh, no, that's what I said in the beginning. More questions than the answers. <laughs> so we can yeah. we can ask sir. We can call sir again. One or two sessions we can have. Oh again. yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, the Thank peak you. is. So to, over to chairpersons for their concluding remarks. Then Tofan sir. It was um, wonderful hearing you, sir. A uh, lot of insights and uh, a lot of areas where uh, actually we need more focus are there. Uh, as uh, Dr. Amrit and Dr. Lim discussed, uh, we can have a number of uh, more webinars with you, sir, each week, week after week. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome. Off to Dr. Shweta. Thank you, Dr. Venkateshan. I think it was a truly scintillating topic, uh, leaving us with more questions, like you said, and wanting for more. So, um, indeed, a very well presented topic. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tofan sir. Please. Thank you, Dr. Venkateshan. It's a nice and excellent presentation, as is expected. 
I was one minute late, but I I was unmuted a little late also. <laughs> so I always think of one concern we we talk about the rain that I have expressed many times with Dr. Sesadri also. On this platform, the children we think of are the children who can reach Dr. Amrit, can may reach me, can reach Dr. Lin Chidriki, and or Dr. Venkatesan. But a large number of children of this country are in the orphanages, and they are the fortunate ones. There are a large number who are not in our orphanages and roaming in the streets. And they have changing parents. They are big boss, bhai, bhai, dada, and they are their parents. For them, at least for the second level, the children who are in orphanages, I think there should be a guide and there should be a development how they will parent the children because they are the parents. A team of four members are the parents for 150 children. And they may not come to a counselor like Dr. Amrit or Dr. Sinivasan or me or anyone. But they are our liability to be done in this country. Any tip in that respect? Dr. Srinivasan. Very right. Oh, nobody to hear them. We have to develop a schemata to reach out to them. Yeah. They are not heard, they are not, uh, but they have their voice. But yeah. Nobody is ready to hear them. At least we can train the orphanage the, um, managers or the orphanage uh, parents. We can call them parents for the children. At least they should know what is happening in the child and how they should manage. Otherwise, they just throw open their own convictions, which has developed two decades ago, three decades ago, or I go or four decades ago. As you presented in your beginning, they are quite divergent. And they are what stressed and they just impose it on the child. And we have to think for this. This is a big platform, and many people can come over and you can. I'll be helping and, and as a pilot project, take off one or one and see what comes out. Thank you very much. This is my suggestion. And then quite, I greatly appreciate this presentation and uh, the next presentation which you told, I think also very good. I think is a deeper route into this present study. Look forward to have it. And thanks everybody. Sorry for being late. Nice thing of enough here. I've been a and Dr. Chiloki, thanks for sharing this session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm Pass over to Amrit. Thank you so much. Thank you, Srinivasan, sir. When uh, Shweta asked me how many are expected to come, I told just like that 200. So we crossed more than a peak of 325 or 30. Yeah, I saw your message. <laughs> Actually, that's you. We have more than more than 450 logins and you know that's that speaks a lot about our speaker and the topic we have good speakers who have specific topics to speak people come more you know people like me and Aline who speak about everything without knowing anything people don't come so that that's the whole you know truth about having a good speaker with a great topic we're very very thankful to our chairpersons Shweta Dr. Shweta and Dr. Avinav who are close friends and thank you for agreeing to us thank you Dr. Tufan sir even though you were very very busy with the midterm team Sir, so it want to pay Puri on the way he was trying to log in. I know that it's, it's tough sometimes. So thank you at this age stage, you are running around doing so much. Thank you to the whole team, Torin. Thank you to our, our viewers. You know, they, you know, they come week after week, year after year. And that's what we can speak today. So we're almost uh, nearing three years to our webinar. And people are still you know, asking us for videos, YouTube channel, where is this? We all at it like it is the first week. So thank you everybody for supporting us, giving us the right direction, giving us the encouragement to work. It's tough, but with Dr. Tufan and Aline, you know, it, it for me it's just coming and telling thanks at the end. Good night, everybody. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. As not much, little. Yeah.
Yes, sir. Closing 